In this short video, we'll be sharing with you some tips on how to inject your pet. It's not often you'll be asked to administer an injection to your pet, but for owners of diabetic pets or ones needing desensitizing skin vaccines, then it is essential. Firstly, let's talk about how you should store your insulin or vaccine. Both of these products are heat labile, so therefore would need to be kept in the fridge. If your fridge is not regulating its temperature effectively, this can result in the products being stored at the wrong temperature and then becoming inactive. You may therefore want to consider the use of a maximum minimum thermometer. Okay, so we're just going to demonstrate how to draw up the insulin. Before we do that though, I'm just going to just remind you, you do need to keep your insulin in the fridge. It's very, very important that insulin and indeed the skin vaccines, the desensitizing vaccines, are kept at the correct temperature. Um, if they get too hot, they will become denatured. Um, so it's very, very important that you do keep it in the fridge. Now, from these two bottles, this is obviously the insulin, and the bottle on the right is uh, uh, an antibiotic, which I'm just going to just demonstrate what tends to happen. Both of these are suspensions, and as you can probably see, we have a clear bit on top and a, 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 a bit of powder at the bottom. And it's very important with insulin that you sus resuspend this uh, solution correctly. Otherwise, you'll be drawing off clear parts, which will have less insulin than it should have, and then when you get down to the bottom where the insulin is more concentrated, it's going to cause you a problem. So accurately suspending the product is incredibly important. Now with the antibiotics, we can be quite vigorous with our shaking because antibiotics don't matter. The molecules there are quite stable. So it's quite okay for me to give this a, a good shake. That's not a problem. But with insulin, the molecules that make up the insulin are quite, uh, quite, quite delicate. So we just need to agitate the bottle rather than shake it, and we just rotate it three to five times, something like that, or if you prefer, you can roll it in your hand. The next step is obviously to draw up the insulin, and you're going to have a syringe, probably a one mil syringe or smaller. Um, this is a, a, a one mil insulin syringe, so I'm just going to peel it out of the pack like this. You'll notice that it has two covers. Um, there's a, a, a cover at the plunger end and a cover at the needle end. We'll take off both these covers, the, the one at the plunger end first, followed by the one at the needle end. Make sure you don't prick yourself. Put the, 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 the cover down somewhere you can get to it again. We've got our insulin suspended. We need to hold the bottle vertically. And we're going to be inserting the needle in the little bullseye at the end of the bung there. I don't know if you can see that on the video. But it's very important we try and get the, the needle straight up the middle. So just putting it into the middle, into the centre of the bung like that, and then straight up the long axis of the bottle. We're going to draw up the dosage. Now often when you do this, you'll get a little bit of air at the top. As it happens, I haven't really got too much air there. But if you do get some air there, you need to just give it a little flick. That gets the air up underneath the needle, and then you can just inject back so that you've got the correct dosage. In this case, I've drawn up five units. And then withdraw the syringe from the bottle. Put the cover back on, just so it's safe. Be careful when you're doing that. It's very easy to prick yourself. And then put your insulin bottle back into the fridge. So we've now got the patient, and we're just going to inject the five units of insulin. So we take off the needle cover. We make our tent. We go in up to the hilt, draw back, making sure there's no blood, and a nice smooth injection, and a little rub afterwards. As always, if having watched this video you have any questions, or if you encounter any difficulties performing the procedure, then please phone or email the surgery. We're here to personally help give you the very best advice and treatment possible for your much loved pet. Thanks for watching. Any feedback regarding this video will be very much appreciated.